Okay, great. Um, welcome back, everyone, to the third Lightning Talks uh, session of the conference. Um, today, we'll have three presentations. Um, feel free to go ahead and post any questions you have, either in the Zoom chat or in the Slack channel um, chat. Um, we are going to go through all three presentations, and then we'll have questions um, at the end. So we are going to hold them. Um, our first lightning talk of the day is um, Carla Toro talking about open repositories, the case for Wikibase. Uh, Carlo Tora Fernandez is the Training and Technology Manager at Wikimedia Chile. She's an astronomer and holds a master's degree in social communication. She also has specialized, uh, she also has specialties in open knowledge, open science, and new technologies. Thank you, Carla. Thank you, Christy. So I go ahead, yeah? Please do, yes. <laughs> Thank you. So yeah, I'm Carla uh, and I'm going to talk about open repositories, especially the case of Wikibase. And for instance, or for, for starters, I mean, what is Wikibase? Well, Wikibase is the open source software developed by Wikimedia Deutschland and is especially for working with structured data. You can see the old logo here, but this is uh, the new one. <laughs> and Wikibase, is the structure that powers Wikidata, the, the great uh, database from the Wikimedia projects. And the funny thing, or the special thing, I mean, is that you can have your own Wikidata by creating an instance of Wikibase. So how is all this related to leaked data? Well, Wikidata provides the data and the ontology that others can use and use a, as an example for their projects. And Wikibase, the Wikibase products expand this knowledge through the linked open data, uh, data web. So here you see Wikidata, uh, that it's linked to all the Wikimedia projects, but you also see all of the Wikibase ecosystem that is linked to each other. And it's also linked to the open data, uh, data web. So I'm here to talk about Wikibase as an open repository, because sometimes you are an institution or an organization or even a community that don't have the resources to buy some software. If you have your data in an Excel and you want to migrate them to uh, an structured uh, software or uh, put in somewhere else, not just like a plain database, Maybe you want to buy software, but you don't have the, the resources. Well, Wikibase is a, is a great opportunity for that because uh, it enables you to have your own uh, data in, in, a free, uh, in a free software. And it's also very flexible for cases like archives or museums, libraries, for managing your own collections. If you only want to to have it in an Excel is fine, <laughs> but if you want to give more power to your data and see some relationships about your own collection and everything, you can use this software. And some advantage of using this software is that it's customizable. That means that if you want to put your data to Wikidata, for example, you have to adapt to the ontology that the community has uh, managed and everything. But in Wikibase, you, you can have your own ontology, your own uh, thing to, to explore your data. And it, basically, you can have your own rules <laughs> in this part. So it's tailored entity types to a specific needs of your own organization. It also is extensible. That means that if you have a hundred of items, or even if you have a million of items, it works just as well. Uh, I've already said that it's open source, but it also foster collaboration. You can have your own team uh, all working together through this data or collaborations uh, from other entities via your own database. But also the, the important thing and the thing I, I think is, is the best uh, part of everything is that it also has the query service integrated 
in the same platform. Sometimes you have your database uh, or your data and you have to download it, put it, put it in your uh, in other uh, software or create a program, especially for uh, look something in your database. Well, in this case, Wikibase has the query service, the same uh, as Wikidata. Uh, of course, it, it will be uh, querying something in your own database, no, not in Wikidata, but it's something great to have. And of course, I want to show you some examples because if I talk about Wikibase as an open repository, uh, what are the examples or the tangible things that uh, you can see uh, in, in, this in this theme? Well, here in Chile, we are having some, uh, some interesting things uh, because we are partnering with Wikimedia Deutschland to have uh, to expand the uses of Wikibase to South America, to all South America. And we're starting here with a prototype of an uh, instance of Wikibase about Chilean music because we have, well, a lot of music, but uh, we don't have a, a database about all of the singers, songwriters, bands, the genres and everything. And we don't have uh, something to look about, to look for the uh, intellectual property about this, uh, this music. So we are trying to put it all of the, all of this thing in this uh, Wikibase instance. And we're also helping with a Wikibase instance on historical educational uh, data because we have a lot of data <laughs> in the Ministry of Education and uh, a group of academics are working with Wikibase, but uh, in the part of visualization mode to see how this data can be used uh, and uh, share with the whole country or whatever person want to uh, want to know about. We also have uh, some examples in South America, but not from museums or glam institutions, but so for some communities, uh, such as uh, the Quechua language community, that they want to, or they, they already did, <laughs> they have a, a wiki-based instance to support uh, all the Quechua language, but also their knowledge. So this is an interesting thing. I put some video here that you can watch it because I uploaded the, the slides, so <laughs> you can have it here. But the, the example that I really talk uh, always <laughs> in this type of, of things is the Semantic Name Authority repository from the Library of Welsh that uh, they have this problem, it's not really a problem, but uh, a lot of the, the data that, that they have uh, doesn't uh, or, or didn't uh, work well with how Wikidata is, uh, is made, or they have like only 50% of the, the knowledge of their uh, data in Wikidata, but, but the other half, they didn't uh, they couldn't manage to put it in Wikidata. So they say, okay, let's have our own Wikidata with our own rules. And that way we can manage or they can manage the their own data in a way that they feel uh, good about it and they feel responsible uh, about this data. I also put here the, the example because I think this is the, the best way to to see like a th tangible thing about how to use Wikibase in a in a glam institution, and also to get to just uh, be finishing with this presentation. Uh, if you want to create your own Wikibase, if you if somehow uh, I managed to put the idea <laughs> in your heads, <laughs> uh, how do you do it? Uh, well, the first thing you can reach out to the partnerships in uh, the Wikibase partnership uh, program uh, of Wikimedia Deutschland. They can help you with everything you need. But if you want to talk with me, you can also contact me <laughs> if you need orientation of uh, why why uh, why use Wikibase or anything. I can help you with with Wikibase. I will be happy to to do. 
And I will be looking forward if you have any thoughts, any questions about it in, at the end of the whole presentations of Lighting Talks. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, Carla, and thank you for that reminder. You can post any uh, questions you have in the Zoom chat or in the Slack channel, uh, the conference Slack channel. I just posted the link um, for that there in the Zoom chat. Um, next up is um, Esther Jackson, who will be um, talking to us about saying goodbye, when to sunset a community group or walk away from a project. Um, this is really hard, so I'm really excited to hear this. Um, this talk. Um, Esther Jackson is the Scholarly Communications Technology Librarian at Columbia University Libraries, where she primarily works with the repository, Academic Commons, and supports the digital publishing program. In addition to her work with researchers, code, and metadata, she's an active member of the Wikiverse, including serving as a committee member of the Wikimedia Foundation's Regional Fund for North America. Esther? Thank, <clears throat> thank you for that great introduction. Okay. All right, hi everybody, um, I'm Esther Jackson. Um, the title of my talk is Saying Goodbye, When to Sunset a Community Group or Walk Away from a Project. Um, I know this is like a little bit outside of the theme of a lot of other talks. Um, so I hope that it's, it's useful to the community um, and I'll be talking about uh, a group within the LD4 community as our example. So uh, I'm framing this talk um, in the context of my experience with the Wikibase working group. Um, a lot of the times, especially in libraries, there are an endless number of exciting new technologies and standards, and we just wanna sort of like jump in and get our hands on things and do as much as we can, as fast as we can. And that's great. Uh, but over time, we have to assess our capacity um, and and the 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 future of these groups and projects. So I don't have to go into what Wikibase is because Carla uh, gave just such a great comprehensive overview. Um, but the group that I'm talking about was a group or is a group uh, that works on uh, community programming around Wikibase. So what was initially uh, called the Wikibase and w Stack, WB Stack Working Hours launched in 2020. Uh, it arose out of the Wikibase Use Cases Group, which was um, convened in 20, 2019 at WikiConference North America um, in Cambridge, New York. Or, sorry, Cambridge, Massachusetts. I'm in New York. Uh, and so the initial charge of the group was pretty broad. Um, the group wanted to explore... Uh, ways to gather feedback about Wikibase, ways to provide complementary or supplementary programming around uh, Wikibase, and then also explore the functional needs of GLAM workers um, who were interested in Wikibase. So this timeline gives you a sense of the activities of the group um, from the first year when programming was offered. There were 10 workshops or presentations and that declined uh, slowly over time until there was one uh, workshop or presentation this year. That library of content still lives. Um, it's on our wiki page uh, and I'll share it with you all um, through the slides. Um, and yeah, it's a great, I think, uh, a great artifact from this group. So uh, thinking about team development more broadly, um, I found the work of Bruce Tuckman, who has uh, this model of forming, storming, norming, and performing um, when he's thinking about small groups. And I'm not going to read all of this to you now. Uh, I'll put it on the screen if you want to read it. But he was very focused on um, the stages that it took for a team to get to the point where they were performing very well together. And that for him was like the most important thing. How do you onboard members? How do you um, negotiate power dynamics? How do you actually get the team um, functioning? So what was interesting to me about this model, and I think it's telling, is that um, adjourning or the dissolution of a team uh, or sunsetting of a project was an addendum to this. He didn't actually think about that as part of the necessary, um, it, he didn't think of that as a necessary part of the model until 12 years after his initial uh, model was developed. So there are a number of definitions available online about 
this adjourning stage of a group. But the thing from this definition from Westchester University that really stuck out to me is uh, the fact that at this stage, typically team members are ready to leave. It's about the individuals. It's about the team members kind of assessing where they are. Um, and in the case of community groups, like that's often uh, sort of like the catalyst for change. So the wiki-based working hour, when we got to the point of hiatus, still had uh, this grayed out text at the bottom, which was the mission or the, the, the focus that the group had at the beginning in 2020. Um, but in addition to that, uh, we had added on these additional areas um, that we focused on. And a lot of it was about creating a space for GLAM professionals who were experimenting with Wikibase um, and giving them uh, tools and resources to do that work. So we sort of had the sense that the group was maybe um, winding down a little bit. We had lost organizers over time. People had moved on to different projects. And so we had to ask ourselves some questions at this point. What capacity did we have? Uh, what ways could we continue to provide programming to meet the needs of the community as well as our own professional interests? Um, and what other spaces existed at this point the community members could use for Wikibase questions? So that started with very practical steps. We had group conversations about capacity. We determined that collectively we were very interested in doing something like planning a half-day conference about Wikibase or a full-day conference, uh, but that wasn't something that we could take on at the moment. With our smaller group size, we didn't really have the capacity to continue to do regular programming in the way that we had in the past. After we had that you know, in hand, we put together a survey to find out how the community felt about our work and to identify any areas that the community felt were like essential that we were providing. Um, after we got the results back of that survey, which we sent out through a few channels, we decided that it was appropriate for us to put up the group on hiatus for the time being. People were meeting their needs related to Wikibase from other channels. Um, and we collectively, again, we didn't have the capacity to continue on in the same way. Our final practical step was to alert the LD4 organizers of our plan and to name them as the contact if somebody wanted to start the group up again. So I'm talking about this kind of from a very like precise and you know analytical assessment data driven uh, approach. So I just wanna say that like having feelings about this process is okay. Um, that's a big part of it for me. Uh, how do I feel about it? How does the group feel? Um, even though this is work and it's not like, you know, the center of my entire life, like I have emotions, I have relationships and that's okay. Any transition is hard. Uh, similarly, some people don't maybe have that same emotional reaction and that's also okay. There has to be space for both of these things um, when you're doing a transition. Different people will have different approaches and different responses to it. So in terms of um, the Wikibase working hour in particular, we do have some key artifacts from that group. The first is a library of pres presentation recordings, uh, which I, sh I mentioned before. The second is a lot of good internal documentation that the LD4 organizing group has access to, as do the conveners of the Wikibase working hour. Um, and that's available for people to go back to and to build upon in the future. We have a lot of strong relationships. Um, there were some good relationships going into this group, which was very powerful, I think, and very helpful. Um, and group members have presented with each other at conferences, given workshops together, gone to each other for advice. That's like a persisting thing from this group. We also left the door open. There's a possibility of renewal, um, either with existing organizers or with new group facilitators. So final takeaways for say, saying goodbye, if you think you need to say goodbye, if you're thinking about saying goodbye, is that it takes work to properly transition a project. Um, it's something to approach with thoughtfulness um, and with care and to make sure you have the capacity for, even if it's not a huge amount of work, it is work. Publicly modeling your transitions away from projects and communities help others do the same thing. Being upfront about your capacity, about how you're making decisions to step away from a space, um, you know, being complimentary of the people who are remaining and like preserving those relationships. If you model that publicly, it helps other people. Dif difficult conversations about sunsetting or hiatus might be less difficult than you imagine. Uh, we all, I shouldn't say we all, uh, glam professionals, many of us, 
want to do everything. We want to know everything. We want to like have our finger on the pulse of technology. And so a lot of people are at capacity or they're above capacity. Um, and they may relate to your feelings more than you think. And then finally, uh, if you don't leave the door open for your particular group or project, at least let people know which door to try instead. Um, and in our, our case, we directed people to uh, other Wikibase working hours, as well as a couple of Wikibase um, telegram group spaces. Oh, and that was supposed to be a thank you slide. There we go. Uh, thank you very much. I'm looking forward to uh, answering any questions um, at the end. Thank you so much, um, Esther. Our next lightning talk um, is from uh, Greta Hang, Trisha Lampton, and MJ Han. Um, it's called Cataloging and Metadata Strategy. Oh, sorry, that's not the talk. Ah. Let's talk about the work, sorry. Um, I messed up my own notes. So our next presentation is called Let's Talk About the Work um, by Greta Hong, Trisha Lampton, and MJ Han. MJ Han is the metadata librarian and Berthold family professor in information access and discovery at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. Her research interests include interoperability of metadata and semantic web linked data. Greta Hung is the Cataloging and Metadata Strategies Librarian at San Diego State University. And her research interests include linked open data, semantic web, identity management, and information search behavior. Trisha Lampron is a Cataloging and Metadata Librarian at the University of California, Irvine. Her research interests include linked data for libraries, as well as DEIA efforts and practices in cataloging and library metadata. So let's talk about the work. Thank you so much. So hello, everyone. I think Esther actually brought a really interesting uh, word transition into uh, that segue really well into our presentation. So this presentation topic started from a question, why the current reframe linked data editors ask catalogers and metadata creators to create an instance and work data at the same time? or ask to find, uh, find and link the instance data to work data. We were curious about what the work is and why the work data is needed, why and how it is used and what information is required to describe the work in order to meet such needs. So our talk today is titled, Let's Talk About the Work. So what is work? Not surprisingly, there are several definitions of work, even in the library domain. For example, the B-frame defines the work as the highest level of abstraction, and a work in the B-frame context reflects the conceptual essence of the cataloged resources, such as authors, languages, and what it is about so-called subject. I think the word conceptual essence here is very interesting and important, as it means that something abstract that determines its character. And in 401 group entities, work is defined as a distinct intellectual or artistic creature, a creation, which is a little different but similar to what Reframe uh, defines the work. However, outside of the library domain, or even our users and colleagues in public services, work could mean many different things, such as a book or a journal, artwork, and more. It has a broader meaning than what we, the linked data group, or community try to work with. So our question, Greta, when do we uh, when we do the traditional mark cataloging, we don't separate the work data, instance data, or manifestation data, and so on. Some discovery systems even have formalization functions that extract the work level data from existing mark record. So if that is that is the case and possible, why do we need work data now in the linked data era? And how should the work data be created? And what information should be included? So in order to answer these questions, I think we have to look at how the work data and the relationships can be used. 
as everyone knows, there is no clear evidence of use cases for work data for now. As mentioned in the Ferber model, work can help display library items in meaningful ways to users of a catalog or a bibliographic listing, which means it is used to group things together. Does this require linking similar resources together through metadata? If no, why do we create the work data? Let's first see what constitute work level data. We will use a, a CD titled um, Faster and Louder as an example. Its work data is available in both OCLC and LC. We started from its mark record and found its work data information from the um, 758 field in its OCLC record. The subfield 1 includes the URI and the subfield 4 specifies the relationship, which is has work. So the URI in its subfield 1 is the work. When click the URI, we are directed to the WorkCat entities, the OCLC's entity management system. And when you click the download, you can see a very clean and simple JSON data. That includes key information, essence of the work, the concept data, such as creation date, preferred label, alternative label, title, language, type, and description. In contrast, the LCB framework data is very rich and detailed. On this page, you'll see the work data includes a lot of more information than what you get from OCLC's work data. As the data is so rich, there is an option to choose between a verbals and a compact version. For our example, the compact JSON data has 2902 lines, while the verbals version has 4348 lines. The screenshot on the right is just the first few lines of the compact data. This is because the BibFrame work data is very comprehensive that includes admin data, more detailed description, and more. It's clear that this level of detail isn't created entirely by humans. It's probably a mix of human input and systems, or maybe majority um, was done by machine. Again, um, OCLC only captures the core essence of work, while LC's work um, captures everything. This might be because there's no detailed and clear guidance or application profiles on what work level properties are required in the data. Also, you'll notice that OCLC and LC use, ver use two different ontologies for their work data. So Tricia, um, we, we have looked at two very different work data for the same resource. In terms of creating work data, who create work data? Can we rely on library service platform or metadata editors to generate work data for us based on the information available in the system? And when do we have to create work data? So until recently, work level metadata has been created through the conversion of MARC records into linked data ontologies, meaning the majority of this work data was created by machine processes rather than by hand. OCLC's Ferber Workset algorithm proposed building work data primarily using title author data from the bibliographic record and then using authority records to further correlate the bibliographic data and enhance work data. The Library of Congress has utilized the MARC to BibFrame conversions to create work level data directly from MARC bibliographic records. And BibFrame has also, I'm sorry, BibFrame also has a new bibliographic entity called Hubs. According to Elsie's core presentation on BibFrame Hubs in 2023, uh, these hubs were created by extracting title and name title authority records from the LCNAF, as well as uniform titles and main entries from MARC bibliographic data. I think that this uh, newer edition of BibFrame Hub signals that the concept of work is more complex than originally thought. So the, the Marva, Marva and Sinopia interfaces as seen in the slide are designed based on the data model. And to some extent, they're also restricted by the data model. 
When cataloging in MARC, we don't need to separate the data into work, expression, and manifestation level records. The metadata for each are populated in one MARC record. This is similar to how, how MARVA works. The form consists of both work and instance data and even item level data all in one place, making it less cumbersome for the metadata creator. But there is the additional step of searching for the work level data before deciding to create a new description set. Sanofia, on the other hand, has a much more complex design. It separates work level data and instance level data completely. Uh, the metadata creator has to first create one, extract the identifier, and then add it to the other in order to link them together. Because the data is separated, this also means that importing it into your LSP requires having to import multiple description sets and make sure they link up properly. So we know that work data can be used for providing a cohesive experience for our library users. And currently many of our systems do this automatically by evaluating certain mark fields and using that metadata to ferberize the records and collocate them in the discovery layer. If metadata systems can do this with MARC metadata, can we use this system to provide similar results within our BibFrame editors? Can the editor interface merge both work and instance level properties together and let the system divide them into two levels of data? Can the system auto suggest existing work metadata the way that Marva and Sinopia suggest name entities? And are there other possibilities for streamlining the workflows and reducing the complexities that come from creating work data? We still have a lot of questions on work and work data, including what is it? Who should create it? How should it work for us and our users? What information should be key for the work data and whether it's really needed? So let's talk more about the work. Thank you so much for those lightning talks, everyone. Um, so we're going to move to the Q&A section now. So please post your questions for any of our lightning talk presenters, either in the Zoom chat or the Slack channel. Um, we do have one right off the bat for Carla uh, from the Zoom chat. Uh, Carla, would Wikibase, would Wikibase be a good option for an individual, for example, a single artist? Yeah, I saw the, the the question, and if I uh, if I see correctly the the, the question, uh, if it if it's only for one artist, uh, I mean in this example, like only uh, a singer with all of the uh, charts and music and everything, I don't think it will be uh, something like uh, how do you say it. Uh, like rich to have uh, but if you have a lot of singers and all of the data about them it will be uh, great for see some uh, relationships about this data yeah thank you are there any other questions for our presenters today There's a question just came in from Crystal in the chat. Oh, thank you. I will turn it over to you then. Do you want to read that? or? Sure, happy to. Uh, Crystal asks, are BibFrame editors using the same definition of the BF work and BF hub in a way that facilitates reconciliation? For instance, the BibFrame ontology being developed by the National Library of Finland, the BibFrame ontology at the Library of Congress, BibFrame used at ShareVDE, are all of these work level entities equivalent and interchangeable? Well, if I can, uh, if I would like to answer, I hope so, and I hope that is the case. And that is actually a really good question that we need to talk about more, because currently those uh, work data is uh, housed, created, and housed in separate repositories and places. And how those work data can be shared and used could be a really good question, and something that we need to find out. 
And I just want to say there weren't actual questions for Esther, but a lot of really good discussion. And I think Nancy is raising her hand. So in response to that, my video doesn't want to, um, oh well. Um, in response to that final question, um, First of all, there is the BibFrame interoperability group at which all these libraries mentioned in the question belong to um, and their things. And the National Library of Finland is not developing a BibFrame ontology. They are, they use BibFrame <laughs> and they, they may be adding a bit few extensions and that kind of thing for local needs, but it's not like they're reinventing it from scratch or anything like that. And that is the same with ShareVDE. Uh, ShareVDE has an extension, but BibFrame is in there in, in its entirety. I can tell you that for sure. Um, um, I, I just wanted to mention though, also with Synopia, what you were saying, um, it was a partly a choice, partly a technical problem at the time, but partly a choice to separate out work and instance. Um, but um, if you are exporting, you do not export works and instances separately. Um, where the data is held, it, um, it brings them together. And if you actually have an export button for your local institution, it you export the instance, but it brings all the work data with it. You are not actually exporting each separately. I, I just wanted to make that clear. I'm um, so glad that Nancy is here today. And um, yeah. I just, I just, also an interesting thing, the separation of the work and instance, my catalogers actually say they like it now. So you never know. Um, you can bring them up beside each other, either in tabs or in two separate instances of of Synopia on the screen. So, you know, it's, you can't have them together. Thank you, Nancy. I'm, uh, again, I'm so glad that Nancy is here today because Nancy is actually center of the uh, developing uh, development of Synopia. And as Nancy said, BigFrame is initially developed by the Library of Congress, but as other ontologies, there are many different flavors of uh, extensions and so on happening now in many different organizations and national libraries and so on. One more question from Crystal. Is Big BIG working to bring disparate BibFrame ontology implementations together? Do they have any recent reports? I think Nancy can report that. So we are with, uh, yeah, Nancy, I think you, you can you can answer that. Um, we've been putting out reports and giving talks. We just gave a talk at the BitFrame workshop in Europe. Um, 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 uh, yeah, it's a PCC group. <laughs> Um, so, um, yeah. Some really great uh, discussion in the chat. Not exactly questions, but worth reading. So, so Laura says in the chat about um, there's an, an economy in having a lot of descriptive, descriptive information work level that doesn't have to be repeated. And then you can add an instance level record to that. Um, and this is like, yeah, something that I have thought about in terms of workflow and how this potentially could, it kind of does add another step though, like, um, like when I'm cataloging a book, you know, I will start with ISBN. That's kind of like the, the first thing. And that would, I think, be instance level, right? Um, if I don't, if, if I don't find that, then like I 
it, you know, I would probably search by title or something else, but um, potentially you would want to find the other, you would want to find a like work level data for that, which I think is a little bit in, in terms of like having them separate to me is a little bit more complicated than, than it, whereas in Mark, like where I'm just finding one record, right? Um, what happens if I just decide to create another description set that includes another work level? Are they ever going to be merged or, or are they just then two work level records that are basically the same because maybe I, I didn't look hard enough or I, I don't know. To me, it seems like more steps in the workflow, but may maybe that's not what everyone thinks. I don't know. Thank you for that great conversation. I'm going to pull again from the chat. There was an earlier comment about Esther's presentation. Let me scroll up so I can read the original comment. Um, just one second. Um, a parallel problem is finding a new spokesperson or chair when the current one wants to get off, but still sees future work for the community and does not want to shut it down. Um, Esther, would you like to um, speak to your response in the chat or? Yeah, sure. I didn't want to Thank divert you. The, conversa <laughs> the conversation, but I had another thought Not about at all. This. It's um, keeping it going. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, um, a chair, transition is like a very difficult one and that can spell the end of groups at times. So my, my two comments were just that, um, if you have the ability to offer like a co-chair option, that can be a way of, um, attracting a successor, uh, and then also setting a calendar for succession is another way to attract people to take on that role because they have a sense of how long they'll have to do it. Um, and that they're not just signing up for like the rest of the group's existence. So. Um, thank you that, for that. I do see the Bib Frameworks conversation continuing in the chat. Would anybody else like to um, step up to keep the conversation going? And also, um, do presenters have um, preferences for keeping the conversation going after this session? Would you like people to contact you or or or? Write things in Slack, what works for you? Yes, that works. No, thank you for asking that question. Um, we have three more minutes, so there is uh, time for one more question. Um, if anyone has one, um, otherwise I would like to actually highlight um, uh, my colleagues here to thank you for helping out, uh, Susan and Robert Plusher and Jessica. Um, oh, I, hold on one second. Uh, Jessica Hayden, uh, thanks for, for helping out to keep this session going uh, so smoothly. Okay, if there are no other questions, thanks everyone for such a great conversation. Um, and thank you to our, our presenters um, for giving us uh, such great presentations to talk about. Um, and we'll be turning it over to our next presentation in just one second.